So today on the Robert Space Industries website, we had an update to the Galactopedia, which is the actual wiki that is supported officially. Uh, that is not the only wiki for Star Citizen, but um, it was covered in This Week in Star Citizen, which was put out yesterday. So usually we get like this kind of, for lack of a better term, roadmap for the week ahead for community content. Uh, for example, like they're saying, hey, we're going to publish this very document today, which was yesterday, and then today was the Galactopedia update. Tomorrow will be the roadmap updates, and then finally Friday will be these. Expect a video, I'll be diagnosing some of the roadmap updates, as long as there's anything really big content-wise, I'm not going to just do like a tiny little video, and then Friday will be a big one. But let's get right into it. So Galactopedia is at robberspaceindustries.com slash Galactopedia. It is accessible right from the main page of robberspaceindustries.com. And what you can expect here when you first get in is basically a search page. You can type in whatever you want here, but I found that the index helps because it's not that big. So let's say we wanted to look at the system Nix. You'd hit N and then go to the Nix system or to the specific planet you're looking for. Um, but even like certain things in Nix, for example, the asteroid belt is not actually under N. You'd have to go to the specific location for the first letter of that topic. Uh, but if you go to tags, uh, basically you can actually go to Nix tag and then go through it. We're going to get to this in a little bit. It's not as weird as you think. <laughs> it's a great freaking name though. <laughs> But, uh, so if we went through all this list, we could go to N and we could see the different pieces of Nix that are not literally starting with the letter N, but not that crazy important. So there's two ways to look at the Galactopedia update from today. I prefer the Spectrum, uh, the Spectrum post that was done at 733 on the June 29th. Uh, 7.33 Eastern p.m. Um, because it's more uh, raw, you know, it has the direct links. You can also copy and paste them if you want. And down in here, you can actually see some of the comments back from the team talking about certain things. Like, for example, we pulled the remote Roman numerals off of these and we just put the numbers just to keep it simple. Um, you know, so it's letters and numbers uh, to make it simple for the, for the, when you're trying to find a specific planet, a specific moon in the list. Uh, they mentioned here how the UE absorbed a specific program. Uh, this person's like, you know, trying to check maybe for content creation or just for their own interests. You know, hey, how does this program that was pre-UEE Navy, uh, you, how does that kind of connect everything together? Um, and as they're explaining that that program was absorbed by the UEE. So you're getting this direct information. So that's another thing that you get with this wiki is you actually have, at least at the moment, support from the team that's, that's updating it. And that's a really cool thing. So if I was in your shoes, if you're very big in lore, maybe you're a content creator, maybe you're just interested or you just want to learn, you know, more about a specific, you know, uh, species that you're interested in or a specific kind of ship class, uh, background on, on a specific type of uh, system that you're really excited about upcoming, now is the time to go through the Galactopedia and then post into this uh, post that's in the general forums. It'll be at the top because it's posted by a staff member and it's pinned. And uh, I would get in here now, like as in now, if you're listening to this as of, you know, when I'm posting this, it's June 30, um, now's the time. Anyway, uh, there was something else important here that I thought was interesting. Uh, the lore team uh, post spoke about, uh, Sherry here spoke about having jump points moving in an orbit around the system. Now, Ash and I, when she was co-hosting with me, we spoke a lot about how they could implement jump points and micro jump points and how those structures, you know, how do they move, etc. if they have to move. Um, Sherry's right. Basically, that's why we brought that up was it doesn't make sense for the jump point to be static unless there's some type of energy force or something holding it in place. I mean, they could write that, write that in the lore, but more likely the jump point would be 
orbiting the sun, just like everything else in the system. No matter how much mass it has, the sun usually, well, in most, in virtually every case, the sun has more mass than the rest of the things. That's why it's in the middle of the system, unless it's a dual star system or a binary star system or something other interesting like that. But in most cases, a single star, things orbit the sun. <laughs> so if it's in that case, then it would make sense that the jump point at the very least would orbit in those type of systems. Uh, but you can see here that Lure is making crystal clear that, look, I don't know how it's going to look in the game. That's up for the game designers to figure out. And that's important here. So Lure has its limits when it comes to a major a, a game mechanic being implemented or not implemented in a certain way. If they, if they have that jump point orbiting the system, if the subspace relays are hacked or damaged in any way, you will have to... Pr you have to scan out the beacon or, or at least tune in that direction a good distance. In some cases, some systems can be 20 AU across or more. And being able to find that without the subspace relays constantly saying, here I am, here I am, you may be warping to the wrong direction or the wrong place. Or even worse, criminals might be able to reprogram those so you'll literally warp to it and it, it's it's a trap. It's, it's not actually there. I doubt they're going to let you do that unless it's like the most backward of dangerous places with like a tiny little jump point but anyway it's just worth mentioning that it is a distinct possibility that at the very least they could disable subspace relays and as the system is not being updated real time for a, a definitive amount of hours or something in theory you could warp to the last known position of that jump point and the jump point is like a <laughs> uh, 100 kilometers away from where you landed and now you gotta you gotta slow boat over there or figure out another way or maybe you can quantum from there etc. But it is interesting to note that if it's moving, it does create some gameplay implications and it also adds some extra dynamics for explorer ships. They suddenly become that much more valuable for scouting the fleet. Hey, we're going through systems where the enemy or just neutrals are breaking the subsystem relays. So being able to reliably find the jump points that might have moved a little bit since the last time we went through over the past few days or something, we might want to bring a vessel with serious scanning chops to be able to just get that good or just at least signal intelligence that can pick up the signal uh, from good distance away. It's interesting to note. For example, the Carrick has jump point scanners. It's literally part of its system. You know, you have exploration on the Connies and the, the, the Reliance. Uh, they have different models that are able to handle that. I just wanted to mention that. Uh, they all come to mind as excellent examples of ships that kind of have a bit of legs for their class and uh, being able to move. And, of course, the 315P and the Terrapin, et cetera, et cetera. Um, although some of the more military-minded ones might have limitations on scanning for jump points and other navigational instruments. I always have to mention as many as I possibly can because I don't want to feel like I'm biased towards a certain party, uh, at least in the videos. Um, so uh, the list of things that are actually updated is the entire NIC system was added. And here is, for example, the asteroid belt that handles Levski. So Levski was taken out of Stanton. It was never meant to be in Stanton. That was where it was being tested and kind of fleshing out the system. And it was pulled so that they would have more smooth um, gameplay mechanics for when there was Zeno threat. So when you had an Idris and a Javelin duking it out with all that AI and all those different things and all those different objects involved. By pulling Levski, that took a lot of load off the server. And it's unfortunate. Levski's a close favorite of mine. I'm not going to go too in-depth. I'd love to do a whole video on Levski very soon. But it's being moved to the Nick system. That's where you're going to find it next, the next time you ever see it in-game. Um, so the idea is that eventually we will have Stanton, Pyro, and at the very least Nix. Maybe Terra. Maybe that would be another one that would be a good one option. Uh, because our whole pocket here that we live in I'm going to show the star map by the end of this video, but I don't want to go straight to it this minute. Um, long story made short, needs to be implemented. I would not be surprised if there's temporary connections between a couple different systems, and I would love to see Stanton, Pyro, and then quickly after Nix, um, because that would start showing you different different sizes of systems, different law levels of systems, and different gameplay mechanics that are going to come along with these fascinating different locations to explore, to make money in, 
to fight over, to stage organizations out of, and start having different cultural identities in each system. Some systems are going to jive different than others. When you hit the B key in Stanton, there is, it's overwhelming how many different assets there are in front of your face. When you go to Pyro, there won't be anywhere near as many as those. In a system like Stanton, it's kind of an, kind of an interesting concept where you're going to have a little bit of civilization and a lot of exploration as well. That's what excites me about, about, sorry, Nix. When you hit Nix, it's going to be kind of a mix in between the lawlessness of Pyro and the complete overkill control of Stanton, where literally entire corporations own entire planets and have complete UE backing. I, w I think I would love to see something like Nyx, even though it's an unclaimed system with pirates uh, and Levski is not really exactly safe. I would love to see some type of CDF forces kind of hanging out there and kind of setting the tone that it's vaguely law enforcement protected. Vaguely, they turn the other cheek, they turn the other eye, as long as you keep protecting against the Vanduul or the Zeno threat threats, you know, hey, if you're not affiliated with the Zeno threat or you're willing to help defend against the Vanduul, you can hang out in Nix and we're not going to question it, but don't go to a place like Stanton. That's like a trade commerce hub of the entire area. Um, or we're going to have to crack down on you. So I would love to see kind of like that the, the chaotic neutrals kind of want to hang out in Nix. You know, there's a little bit of PVP, but not a crazy amount. And you know, there's not overwhelming, uh, law, uh, lawfulness either. Like you feel like you can barely move in, in Stanton in some cases, if you're in the wrong place. Just some thoughts. Um, I noticed that there's a lot of other mentions here um, in these systems. Each one, each one of these pages that go up, I'm not going to delve into the Davian system. I just don't know enough about it. But I did prepare for the Nick system. Um, I thought it was interesting to see some of the little things. This, for example, is one of like the things flushing out the system. <laughs> So, uh, Booty Call apparently is an underground spectrum broadcast that covers events pertaining to the criminal underworld of the UEE. It is hosted by an anonymous person who goes by the post of Jester. And then they talk about the background of Jester who hijacked the spectrum signal, aired at the advocacy sting of the independent settlement Levski. So, this right here is the interesting part to me. So, not only did they update Galactopedia for all of the Nix entries, and get all that inf good, tasty information in there. They also are adding in things that are fleshing out Levski in the Nick system. This little, uh, you know, show for pirates by pirates is is a really interesting uh, thing for them to add. I think I would not be surprised if we start seeing little broadcasts, whether they're just on the website or actually in game, kind of like hijacking signals to send them through to us. Uh, as we get closer to, to Nick's being rolled out, this would be really cool for them to kind of get us, get our feet wet about the vibe Nick's is going for uh, as a as a culture in the Le in, in the Levski pocket in that asteroid belt and also the overall Nick system. And I, I, that would be really cool. I think this is something that once again, I, I want to see each system have its own flavor, have its own taste and build that hype up. Hype's okay. In the right ways, good energy is good. <laughs> so uh, this is how the Nick system looks when you look into the Wikipedia page. The, sorry, the Galactopedia page. That was not intentional. Um, and I, I think it's worth mentioning that it's a very simplistic. And that's a good thing in some ways. At a glance, I can look at this within minutes and be able to see exactly what's happening. And I can see that there's three planets. I can see all of the interesting things that are in here. For example, there where the, uh, you know, there's the Glacium Ring again. There is Delamar itself, where Levski's at. Um, the three, the three part, the three planets within Nix. A ring, another ring that they haven't really ironed out yet, or they're not going to, which might be a smaller asset. Uh, the Kager Ring. And the fact that Nix is not a claim system where it's like, hey, uh, this this company owns it or something like that. It's considered where humans would reach. And here's right here is the mention of Levski, moon-sized asteroid in the Glacium Ring, 
is considered a haven for humans who wish to live beyond the reach of UEE law. So you know that this is a place that's not exactly the safest place in the whole region. Or sorry, constellation would be the correct word, word in space. I do like the background a little bit. I do like the fact that the jump point connections are in. Um, one major, major issue is the distance the, sh the, 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 the system is across needs to be here. So if we go into a different tool, this is also on the RSI website, that if we go to robertspaceindustries.com slash star map, robertspaceindustries.com slash star map, you can bring up a, a star map of the entire, entire galaxy or, you know, the entire worlds that they're building, the entire verse, entire universe, I should say. And if you happen to zoom into Nick's system, there's one little important thing here, aside from the fact there's a single star, which is nice to know, but it's not a, you know, essential at the moment. Size, 11 AU, right here, 11 AU. You can't see it when you're actually in the system. I don't know why. The information, by the way, is different on here than it is inside the Galactopedia article. And I think this is older information on the, on the, on the star map. I'm not saying the star map's wrong. And by the way, this routing system is awesome. When you click this, you can set this as a destination or departure, or even, I don't even know this one was here, or void. And you can literally just do like equivalent of Google Maps all the way through, <laughs> which is really cool. So uh, you can get an entire thing. It is four jumps, uh, four system jumps between Stanton and Nix at the moment. But that's kind of why at the start of this, I led in with, I think that they should do like temporary jump points between different systems to kind of give us a taste of different systems without having to like develop four systems just to allow us to get to Nix. Uh, I think they should do like temporaries, like, hey, you can go to Pyro and then straight from Pyro, Nix. Or maybe we should do a whole pocket, do an entire constellation of systems. Um, I guess that's for a topic for another day. I mean, but in this system alone, you, you saw all the jump points, which by the way, are harder to see. You can see each one, but in the, in the, in the Galactopedia article, it is very easy to see the jump point connections. In the Arc star map, I think it should have a list on the one side. Now, yes, I know some people will be like, just hit the routes tab. And it's like, okay, I can do this, but it's kind of complicated. You can actually see my old route I used to calculate for this, uh, for this thing, if I hit this, you can see that you have to go through Hadrian. You can see how many, you can see it's a 61 AU jump in the system. You have to quantum travel through the entire damn system, 61 AU. It's the longest one. There's four AU from there to there to get to Terra. And then finally you're back in Stanton. Now it's, it's just, <laughs> it's just something to mention. I, I, I feel like these tools feel very disjointed to me. I'm sorry I have to say it that way, but it's true. I mean, this is a beautiful tool. I think that um, the Arc Star Map is an excellent tool in the right hands. And that's any of us, by the way, any backer who wants to play the game and really sort through things and plan a route. This will be a tool you will use. I probably would, honestly, though, I probably would use this in the 2D configuration. If I go to display and I hit 2D, this reminds me a little bit more of the Eve network. It's a little more practical. Just quickly at a glance, if this is sitting on your other, if you're sitting on your other, uh, your other monitor and you just need to bang something out to get your route, you know, this is probably the way you'd want it. It's just like in 2D. And I wish this had like a list of like, here is your route. When I hit calculate, I think, I think basically it just gives you a route I, and you can set the size of ship, which is a nice touch. So if you need to do like stop offs for like smaller ships, you, you can, because they will need to refuel more often. It'll cost less to refuel, but you will be there uh, refueling. Um, bookmark search. I don't know. The search feature is nice in this. I prefer this like simple at a glance system. I like that the related articles actually are relevant to the Nix system, even this one that is not named like Nix 2 or something, it's Delamar, but it's still, it's known that that's part of the Glaze. Let me try to get the pronouncement right. I know you guys love that. What I get <laughs> pronouncing correct. Let's try it. 
glacium ring? Gla glacium, oh, I'll say it fancy. Glacium ring? I'm going to go with that. Glacium ring. I'll try not to say it anymore because I'm probably mispronouncing it. I apologize. But I also like the fact they have tags. Not habitable. Uninhabitable. 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 Not habitable. So they need to like maybe iron out the tags a little bit because uninhabitable versus not habitable. I'm sorry. What is the difference? <laughs> like, is there little, is there little like uh, gremlins that come out if it's not habitable, but uninhabitable means that there is no gremlins. I, I, what, what does that mean? I mean, they, they need, they need to iron that out a little bit. It also is quite depressing because that means there's not going to be any player outpost anytime soon in the Nick system. <laughs> <laughs> at least unless you have life support on board and the the more complex stuff at player outposts um you know you have to generate your own oxygen maybe your own heat especially when you look at the system um this is an interesting factoid that uh you may not noticed uh this this ring matters so this glowing halo effect is the goldilocks zone that any solar system has so if you're too close to the sun it's going to fry you and if you're too far away, you're too cold. But if you're in the middle, like for example, Delamar, in theory, it's almost to the edge of the Goldilocks zone. It's actually in it. So in theory, in a perfect world, if that was a planet with water and such, that might have had actual breathable air or some other crazy thing like nitrogen, you know, a nitrogen atmosphere or something weird, you know, something that maybe you could work with and have processing equipment to help you make something out of it. Just something to think about. Um, Nix is not that system. If we go back and we take a look at Stanton, Stanton is that system. So if you look at Stanton, notice the halo and Hurston is like super close. That's why it kind of feels like, you know, some really super hot place that's near the equator. And then if you look like Crusaders way out there, and then if you look even further, Microtech, the freezing cold, wonderful, beautiful blue ball it is, uh, is all the way on the edge. All the way on the edge, Crusader lives. Um, sorry, oh God. I, Microtech lives. And um, the Microtech company, you know, prides themselves on how they are able to overcome that. They have labs, they have, you know, they literally want clean environments and they focus on hypertech. But if they were like a farming company, that wouldn't be the best option for them, for sure. It's just an interesting thought. Um, you know, I think the locations that you have will dictate that. And the most valuable player outposts, by the way, will be in the habitable zone. Your cost of operation and your ability to use it for farming and other things like that will be infinitely more valuable. Think of Crusader themselves. Crusader took over the Crusader plant, planet um, in the high atmosphere st uh, docks the UEE started because it was easier to make the big ships in low gravity but still have oxygen. That's something to keep in mind when you're planning out for your organization. Maybe the best moons or you know places to scope out for player outposts. That's obviously down the line, but it's worth mentioning. It's something to think about long term if you're that kind of mindset. So while you're planning out like which station your guys are going to be operating out of or what, what planetary location your guys and gals are going to be out of, keep that in the back of your mind that, hey, it might want to be a habitable place. It's not just as simple as hopping out once in a while with a helmet on because when you start living at that location, you will need life support. You will need extra resources to sustain yourself and you will possibly lock yourself out of certain content most notably farming if you're not in the right locations just a thought so the main attraction is the galactopedia which was updated and added a bunch of new content we talked about nix i think the actual planets in nix have some really cool interesting facts which the arc star map is not updated with so this one for example on, on nix one it talks about how it's been stripped mined like crazy under the Mesa error, abandoned mining facilities all over the place. Reminds me a lot of Pennsylvania, my own state, where you can go hunting and you run across like an old strip miner or you come across like an old uh, dredging unit or something or an old mine shaft, with, you know, fences around it that are barely up. Um, but when I go into, sorry, I got to go transit the whole systems. If I go into Nix one on here, 
that's another thing. Like the way it zooms in is really kind of rough. Somebody already posted this in uh, the Galactopedia article, but I really hope that that they they pay they pay heed to this. Zooming in like that crazy and then having no method to zoom back out with the scroll wheel is really it has to be quick. Remember, this is something that I'm going to be alt tabbing to while my main game is running. So if you want to if the Galactopedia is for deeper research and the arc star map is meant to be a tool that I'm using for routing information outside of game while I'm running the game or on the fly between game sessions, this needs to be more slick. It needs to be more intuitive and easier to use. And also, this is the next step is information. The routing is great, but the information needs to start being carried over. This shouldn't just say Nix one is a coreless world that has been mined clean. This should have this good information up here, but then underneath it, it should have like uh, in the background each night, maybe they pull the data from the Galactopedia article. Galactopedia calls one paragraph. You could easily fit this into the star map system. As far as I can tell, um, some of these entries on the star map are big. I mean, there are a couple sentences at least. So why, why can't you just grab this? That's already, it's content you already created. So whatever's on the Galactopedia article for that item, it's already tagged bring the tags over or whatever way you have to do it to link these for major things like a planet. A planet in a system is not going to be destroyed unless the Vandul have a new super weapon or something. I don't know. <laughs> Speculating. But aside from some crazy off-the-wall thing, Nyx-1 will always be Nyx-1. So it's okay to cross-link major items like planets and moons and stars and put the best information that your people are doing research on and put it into the star map, unless it was a unless it was a cog, uh, cognizant decision to not if this information was not important, which I, I don't agree with. I think that if somebody's bothering to go into a different uh, app just to grab it, you should have this because they bothered to click information just to get this little factoid. They didn't just go to routing, which would take this away or have it just sit away somewhere and it wouldn't even be their main attraction anymore. They went and they see when you go to Nodesto, it goes away. Somebody bothered, in my case, me. I went and I bothered to go and hunt it down. Went to bother and played the chip challenge equivalent where you literally have to go do this and then scroll your wheel across just right to get this control disc thing, which is infuriating sometimes, um, and hit the information key. So I bothered to pull that up. I might as well just tie the Galactopedia entries in. Uh, here's another one, for example, acid and carbon dioxide, terraforming ter technology, erosion from the atmosphere has made a dramatic mark on the planet's surface. This is good information. If there's a bunch of erosion and there's um, ter old terraforming and noxious environments there, I might need to debrief my, my crew on that. If I'm sending a team down to go check on something or we're trying to find a, you know, a dead miner, or, sorry, a unknown status miner or something, mining operation, I'm going to want to know if there's major erosion and other things like that. They've created crevices and stuff like that and toxic gases. I might change the type of suit that my away team is using uh, for that. But all we have here is a high pressure atmosphere and thick clouds of acid and carbon dioxide make Nix 2 not worth terraforming. We got half the story. I mean, that's better than nothing, but there's some other information here. Um, descriptions of the actual green bands, uh, erosion, make a dramatic mark on the surface. I know I'm nitpicking a little bit here, but this is something to think about. Nix-3, ammonia and water vapor. Uh, oceans of supercritical water around the planet's rocky car. High dangerous winds. So these are two critical things right here. You're going to have oceans of supercritical hot water, basically. I think that's what that means and high dangerous winds preventing miners from extracting resources. So if we get a, a mining job or somebody goes telling us at the local um, and then the Levski bar, hey, go to Nix 3, they got good mining out there. Oh, really? And we take the mole out there or we bring ROCs even worse. We bring ROCs or something crazy like that. Uh, we might fall for that unless we do our research. And these tools are the things we're going to be using to not make a big mistake and go to a place and burn all that fuel and risk risk our equipment and risk everything else just to get it. By the way, I was actually surprised I did not realize that Nix had a planet that far out. Yeah. 
Next three is an ice giant that lacks a breathable atmosphere or any valuable minerals. Well, at least it would tell us there's no valuable minerals. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, this part kind of deflates my argument, but still, I feel that an ocean of supercritical water surrounds the planet's rocky core. Um, ammonia and water vapor atmosphere and da high dangerous winds are good things to know, especially high dangerous winds. I'll pick on that then. Um, oh, if I go for a rescue mission, I'm going to want something with strong VTOL capabilities. I am not going to bring a brick, you know, that, that literally cannot make it very well. It poorly flies an Atmo. I would bring something that's very strong in VTOL capabilities to do a rescue mission on that planet, for example, or a strike or whatever I'm doing. So that's just the NIC system. Um, Oh, and where are my matters? Uh, so in the Nick system also, uh, you probably were already yelling this, but the Glacium Ring, sorry, I had to say it again, uh, includes Delamar. And Delamar is a moon-sized asteroid hidden deep within the Glacium Ring. Anti-UE activists, political radicals, and criminals now occupy a deserted mining facility built inside this asteroid. In an effort to keep the potential criminal elements, visitors are strictly forbidden from entering its residential areas. Yeah, that's kind of true. I think they have a bunch of rocks or something that blocked everybody. What I, I explored the heck out of that place, and I especially love the fact you could do ground vehicles and mining off of that setup on the top of the structure. You went like up the elevators, and you could pull out all these ground vehicles, and there was no like protected area that would stop you from doing different things, which was awesome. But there's one major problem with that star map mention. Can you guess what it is? I can. It's the fact that never mentions Levski. So in this one, they do. When you look up Delamar on this, on the Galactopedia, it mentions moved into an abandoned mining facility on Delamar and formed the community, the People's Alliance. This is the place with the statues, by the way, if you're still wondering where I'm talking about. They called their new settlement Levski. In the star map, they do not mention Levski, the name Levski. So, oh, I apologize. <laughs> it's here. But still, it should be in the it should be in the topic and it should be right smack in the front of you when you look at this. You should not have to hit information. If somebody is telling you, if somebody is telling you, I uh, I'm in the Nick system. Hey, meet me at Levski. The first thing I'm going to do unless I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to say, "Well, where is that?" And if I can't get a hold of that person again, I have no idea from staring at this. I have no idea. I only because I've flown there before and I know Levski, do I know oh that's where it's on Delamar, clearly. And this is a problem for a place that's a kind of obscure. It's not a place that people are gonna live in and land in constantly. It ain't a, it isn't a Loreville. It isn't a it isn't an Area 18. It isn't a place that you spent, some, Port Alisar. It's not a place that you spent so much of your time in that you know your bread and butter. And this is not, I'm not just picking on Levski, mind you. This is something that's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger as we get into more and more systems. People are not going to be experts on finding every single thing in a system. I, I, I try to view these from different points of view. And I, I, in this case, I'm picking on it. Because when I look at this, even if I knew to check Delamar, because it's the biggest thing in that ring, the, gla the Glacium Ring, if I knew I was in the ring vaguely, hey, that's where my friend took me before, and that's where, that's where he, he's kind of hanging out at or spawning, spawning ground vehicles or whatever. Um, it doesn't mention Levski until you hit information. And I missed it. The, I missed it the first time. Even prepping for this episode, I missed this. The fact that it says Levski is Landing Zones 1 Levski in tiny little writing there. Whereas in the Galactopedia, at least it mentions it right here. It should also have it here to pick on the Galactopedia a little bit too. And it should have a tag for Levski here. But the star map is the most egregious because this is something that has to work while you're navigating. You don't have time. Whereas at least in the Galactopedia, you should probably read the sentences here. <laughs> and... <laughs> Actually notice that it says the word Levski because you got a little more time and, you, and you're that's the main reason you're there It's literally four sentences read them. So 
I, I guess that's an interesting way to uh, kind of compare these two tools. I think they need, this is a great step in the right direction. Updating the Galactopedia, putting more effort into it. Please continue at CIG if, I doubt you watch these videos, but if you do, fantastic work. It's, 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 it's part of a larger effort, you know, and things like, for example, I noticed with this railing job, the railing entry is rather small. You could easily bolster this by taking literally the content that was used in the marketing for this vessel and plopping it in. Um, it doesn't mention the SCUs. It doesn't have a lot of the content like for the example, the weaponry or something like that, like mentioning maybe the highlights of the vessel. And that's not what the Galactopedia's job is, right? But you could provide links to places that information is available. Cross-link it with the Railin ships, ship page. That's simple. Back on the RSI website, I'm not even going to go to it because everybody knows this. You can go to the RSI website. There is uh, the ship entries. You can simply look there. Put a link to that. That way, your lure team, you're not in hot water. If they decide to change the SEUs or they decide to change the weaponry or the speed of the vessel or whatever it is, bam, you've now added that cross-linking capacity. So star map, ship, uh, ship uh, database, the Galactopedia, I see them all as connected. These are all official services. So work smarter, not harder, and, and don't build in a vacuum where this is. I've said enough catchphrases, I'm going to drop it. But I thought I'd mention that as well, for, especially for ships. That's an important thing. It's not like it's a planet where you can just talk about the background and what its, what it's uh, physical characteristics are, because they just don't change. It, ships are a little more dynamic than that, to be fair, and they're very controversial when any changes are made. So that's where we are with that. Like I said, I'm not going to dive into Davian on this video. I apologize. I did not prepare for that. So I just want to kind of go through a few other things. I thought that this was interesting, putting a criminal element in here as his own thing. Uh, journalist and talk show uh, where he published multiple exposés and built a reputation as a tenacious, opinionated columnist. Terrell vanished for three months after appearing on the debate program showdown where he asserted that the UEE had illegally used a super weapon to destroy the surface of planet Ellis nine else 11 after he was found on van croshaw three and questioned by advocacy officials they're the cops of the ue he again appeared on showdown and insisted that he had been chased into hiding for speaking the truth new united shortly terminated his contract so his his, his website um or his content uh provider is the, the way he hooks up to the uh, to the system the spectrum dispatch system uh, in the wake of this controversy, Terrell accepted a job at Spectrum to develop a talk show, Plain Truth, debuted in 1929 Okay, I learned something new here. I did not think, I thought he was a criminal. Must have been a different uh, Parker, I guess. I don't know. But, pardon me, I would not be surprised if some of these, some of these interesting things are tied together. Um, so you have the guy running a show. You have a new show here. And you also have a uh, you have three different shows here. So I'm curious if the lure team is building themselves out here to be able uh, venue, uh, distribution points to be able to put in different content on the website, or are these going to start being in-game lure approved? content makers that maybe will have one or two videos from per i don't know per year or something like that um to give these out like i said uh with the booty call one out of the system nicks for the pirates um that one i could easily see them doing right before nix is rolled out maybe a quarter beforehand start putting in some hijacked links and such like that that people have to see it you know um Oh, they sung the stars are mine. They sung, um, that's the catch. Uh, that's, I believe that's the, that's the catchphrase for galactic tour. Stars are my today. Um, that's pretty cool. 
I didn't know that. I didn't know they were actually building it out that way. Props to them. See, that's an example of interlinking where there was content created uh, for the annual t videos. I hope that our Space Clarkson, uh, a.k.a. Jax McCleary, is going to come back. I think he's a great character. I think a lot of his content's good. I miss the original tune. Um, a little, little jangle. I did a whole video on this just, just a little short time ago. That was five years ago, if you can believe it. Um, the, the Jax McCleary first came up, first came up for the annual events. Um, and covering all the different ship manufacturers, which is great. Once again, not picking favorites. I, I love that about it. And um, I love little tidbits like this. Uh, little, little, little Easter eggs for people like me <laughs> that, uh, that I'm digging into. So, uh, you know, I, I think that's great. So music, multiple content, and a guy who th I thought was a criminal is actually a, a basically a whistleblower. Uh, finding out all sorts of interesting stuff that UE doesn't want you to know. All cool stuff. And, okay, so there's a lot here we went through. And this was kind of one of my freeform episodes. Um, these are not usually what I do. Um, I tend to do some quicker episodes that distill information. And um, sometimes, I'm all, sometimes on those, especially, I enjoy kind of getting to the point, getting them out. And on this one, I did a lot of prep work. But at the same time, as you just saw, I did a lot of stuff on the fly, too. I kind of wanted to, uh, I get the, I get the gist of when an event or, or something needs a little bit of more pulled from it. And I try to get the hits in the first couple minutes and get the point across, i.e. the star map and the Galactopedia need to interlink as best as possible. And here's where to find the content. And then as those folks kind of leave, uh, hopefully they like comment and subscribe, <laughs> but as those folks leave, <laughs> um, the people that like the longer form content, you know, maybe you're listening to this as part of you know, you're listening to this on your break at work or you're, you know, on your rides. That's fantastic. And I thank you for sticking around and, and enjoying this ride with me, um, where we're kind of going in depth a little bit here into, into some of the nuances of what the lore team is trying to build. I am not a lore expert. If you, if you enjoy this type of content, while I have no affiliation with them, I highly recommend, you know, you, you, you look up some of the people like, for example, Astro Pub, and you, you, you watch some of his content because the, the man's a walking encyclopedia about, well, he's a galactopedia about this content. And um, at the same time, I would say that if you like this type of content and the way I deliver it, please, please, please be sure to like and most importantly, add a comment and feedback or send me one on, on Discord. Um, the links are below for my, basically the forum, the servers I hang out on. And also I am available directly at redj-001, all one thing, like always with Discord. And um, I gladly take comments, feedback, criticism, <laughs> complaints about your favorite ship I picked on. Uh, uh, I actually enjoy these discussions and I believe that they make this content better. So please do so. As I mentioned before, my next two videos will be about this week at Star Citizen. I kind of use this as my, as my, my, my map for the week. Um, tomorrow, aka today, will be the roadmap updates. I don't know exactly when they come out, so probably expect these at the minimum at, by the afternoon. Um, and that's going to be kind of attempting to go in depth or light based on how many changes we see getting ready. And they're part of my road to 3.14 content. So if you like that quicker hitting style, that's your video right there. Um, we're going to get in, get out about maybe some of the capacitor slash power management discussion. Did they finally update anything about the Taurus? Is anything pulled last minute from 3.14 or added? possibly, or some sneaky things where they didn't announce them yet, but there we see them scale back or forward. We'll have some fun with that, but quick and to the point, ideally. And then on Friday will be a longer video again, where we talk a little bit about the calling all devs, which is always exciting, and whatever little hints they drop on the weekly newsletter. Uh, one other mention, Subscriber Vault, I am attempting not to bring up that content 
I do not want to get on everybody's bad side. Uh, please do subscribe to RSI. Uh, there is some fantastic content in there. There is a uh, little discussion inside the subscriber vault uh, from the latest jump point about the Javelin and what its capabilities were intended to be. And like, like I think it was six different um, things it covers and uh, subject, uh, subject things it specializes in. So different types of missions that it, that it handles. And they kind of indicate a little bit of what we talked about in previous videos about it possibly being, well, it is a science and a cartography vessel. And, and it talks about command and control uh, and some few, a few other things. I don't believe I can directly lift from, from, that, from that article. And eventually those articles do go public. Uh, but that right now it's locked behind subscriber doors. So I'm going to try to create a mini video probably next week talking about the javelin and integrating some of the concepts from that without directly quoting or providing content from it just kind of tying it all together with what devs have said what's in what's different places and i feel that that's safe i am not a i'm not a a, a leaker i am not someone who does direct leaks uh if things are if the devs have directly referenced something or if there is rumors out there that are very, very solid from many places, and practically it's it might as well be the dev said it, I will bring it up, and I try to mention if I add my speculation spin to it, um, and do hold me to that. Um, but I don't feel comfortable with being a 100% leaker, and especially not subscriber content or a, like, I don't know. I'm not an Evo Cotty, but if I had my hands on information from them, directly from them like here's a screenshot uh and, um, that is not what you're going to find on this channel i apologize if that's what you're looking for but <laughs> um I, I want to bring you the best information i possibly can i want uh to keep everybody well informed and give you a perspective of somebody who's you know been playing these type of games and loves these type of games for many 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 years i spent over a decade in eve online um <laughs> <laughs> played games as old as space bucks back when i was a kid and uh, this is a trading simulator in space <laughs> a freelancer uh, you name it i've played it it's kerbal space i uh so it's out of the love of these type of games and the love of the building up these communities and i feel that the community deserves good information from the perspective of somebody who just truly loves it I'm not out to make this like, you know, a uh, sales pitch. I'm not out to sell you something or um, uh, try to clickbait you. <laughs> uh, I will admit that I try to make the covers look good. I try to make it clear what in, in, in the title, what they're, what the video has in it and make it a little catchy, but I, I promise that I won't make it completely clickbait. It's not my job here. Well, it's not, it isn't a job. <laughs> That's my point. So I hope that it makes it a little clear. Uh, it's a status update for the channel. I want to thank everybody for putting us up to, I, we just hit past 125 subscribers. Uh, subscribers matter greatly because that makes my content that much easier to get out to you. Um, otherwise, I just have to rely on the search. I'm at the mercy of the search system. If you find me, you find me type situation on like the fourth page or something. Um, and the links you might've found. I, I, I thank with, with, with gratitude, the multiple discords that I, that allow me to post my links and uh, try to get the information out to folks that I exist. And also I am very grateful to the R star citizen subreddit for tolerate me <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, and finally, thank you guys, uh, for listening, especially the ones who make it this far. Um, it's you guys and gals who I make these videos for. And also, uh, anybody who's interested in collaborating, please reach out. Um, I'm always interested. Um, like I said, uh, you can hit me up on Discord, RedJ, hashtag 001, 0001. <laughs> um, I'm always available. Um, and I can work with or without scripts. It's not a problem. If you want to do a freelance discussion, always available. I enjoy these type of videos. I also enjoy cleaner, distilled, fast hitting videos that are scripted and properly set up. 
I feel my viewers seem to be in both camps. So that'll do it for today. Um, this is my first video back in a few days, so I just kind of felt it was necessary to kind of go a little more depth than usual. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'm out of here.